Hmm. I've been dreading making this video because we we all know it's gonna happen on Sunday at 4:25. I mean, it's it's kind of obvious what's about to happen. We're about to get obliterated now. I hate talking like this because it brings me back to 2015 and. If you weren't around for when I initially started making videos back in 2015, that was the Chip Kelly year, um, where pff, everything went down the drain, you know? We traded Nick Foles, we traded LaShawn McCoy, so on and so forth. We ended up with a 7-9 and nine record after firing uh, coach Chip Kelly later in that um, that season. I think it was in the like week 16, December, after we were eliminated from the playoff contention. Um, but... I remember making videos back then, and it wasn't really consistent or anything. It was just, like, really scattered. And I, one, I was three years younger, and two, I wasn't too... I mean, I'm, I've always been known as an optimistic kind of fan, you know? I've always looked for the more positive route when it comes down to not just the Eagles. I don't make other videos regarding the Sixers or the Flyers or the Phillies, but... When the, when the Phillies were in first place for a couple of weeks, I was really looking forward to it. I was like, I think they can make this. I think if they keep playing like this, they can do it. And then everything just went downhill. And that kind of triggered it. That kind of triggered the negativity inside of me. And when I remember as that was going on, the Eagles come back in August. That's awesome. I can't wait. That's something to look forward to. Carson Wentz coming back. You know, everybody who was injured in the Super Bowl playoff run, you know, from... From December to January, those people like Jason Peters, Darren Sproles, Wentz, and so on and so forth, those people that were hurt are going to come back. They're going to come back hungrier than ever. And with, you know, whatever move we make uh, from then on to acquire new talent and stuff, it'll work out. We'll do really well. And I'm here now. A year ago, what is it, week 11 we're heading into tonight? We were 9-1 and one at this point. We were where the Rams, the Saints, and the uh, Chiefs were. And I remember, like, just that optimistic, that positive attitude, even when we lost, you know? Like, we lost to the Seahawks. I'm like, it's fine, it's fine. We're going to win against the Rams, and we won against the Rams. And I remember watching this, like, I couldn't wait to see... Carson Wentz in the second year. I couldn't wait to see what changes are going to be made, what new uh, players are going to be brought up and everything, and all and the draft and everything. It was just a great year. The draft was in Philly, man. Everything just fell into place so perfectly. And now we're past the underdog movement, and I'm sitting here pre-season, you know, before any season began, thinking, okay, we just got to get a running back replacement for LeGarrette Blunt potentially, but if not, if Jay Ajayi can stay healthy, we should be fine. Jay Ajayi goes down in week three. And everything from that moment on just went, just went away. And I'm like sitting back watching the bu the Buccaneers beat us. And I'm like, wow, our defense might be a concern, but it's okay. It's okay. It's only week two. Week three comes in. We beat the Ch the Colts, but our defense started to, to stagger a little bit. But Carson Wentz managed to make it happen in his first game back. I was like, okay, this is really good news. I, I'm so excited for this. Week four happens, and we lose. Week five happens, and we lose. Week six happens, we're back on track. We just beat the Giants. We're full. We're cool. We're cool. We're cool. Week seven happens, and we lose. And we're sitting here at three and four, going into our bye, uh, our last game before our bye week against the, the Jaguars, and I've lost everything. I've just seen the way we lost against the Vikings, specifically that first half, and then watching the fourth quarter debacle that was against the Carolina Panthers the week later, or whenever that was. I don't even remember the timeline about it, but regardless, watching those games, watching those losses happen, knowing we had to go to London the next week, I was so happy that I was on vacation at that time. I didn't. I just had to watch the game and then move on with my life. Just enjoy my time away. We won by six points, of course, but we still won. And we go into our bye week and we get Golden Tate. And now I'm sitting here with the Cowboys next up after their loss against the Tennessee Titans, coming off of a loss against the Washington Redskins. I'm watching this. I'm like, this could get us back on track. We could go five and four. Hope the Redskins lose, be a game behind, and guess what? The Redskins lose, and when we play the Cowboys, we just nothing. First half, three points, 
And the defense in the second half, granted, of course, you lost. You didn't have Jalen Mills. You lost Ronald Darby. And you didn't have Rodney McLeod in your secondary. So it's like, what are you going to do? And they put up 27 points on us, majority of that coming into the fourth quarter. And I'm sitting here now having to make a video that I'm already five and a half minutes into talking about the Eagles versus the Saints. <laughs> I don't... I don't have any any hope for this game. The only thing that gives me hope are these three components. Carson Wentz, Zach Ertz, and the newcomer Golden Tate. I put Golden Tate on this list because I believe he's going to get more playing time. I'm going to believe that he's going to get more targets this week and moving into the rest of the season, of course. He just needs to get... It's kind of like a Jimmy Butler thing with the Sixers. He needs to get used to the system. He needs to get used to being around all these new people and everything. That takes time. It's not like a thing that just automatically happens. You know, I was surprised to see him play as well. I wasn't as surprised, but I was happy with what I saw with him in that one game, but I wish I saw more, you know, against the Cowboys. And now... Against the New Orleans Saints, which we don't even know. We don't even know if Jalen Mills is going to be ready to go for this game. We don't even know if Sidney Jones is going to be ready for this game. And not to mention, our our offense is lacking a running game. Not because we're, we don't have one. Josh Adams averages a pretty decent amount of, uh, uh, amount of yards per carry. Wendell Small has been pretty effective when he gets the ball in his hands. He's a pretty tough car uh, run running back. And Corey Clement, you know, he... He took, he took, like, literally just stole the spotlight last year and led us to a Super Bowl and was one of the biggest reasons why we won the Super Bowl last year. And now we're here. He's not getting that many touches. Wendell Small was not getting that many touches. And neither is Josh Adams. Nobody's getting that many touches. And Wentz is throwing the ball 44, 45, maybe even 50 times a game. And he threw, he threw an interception. He fumbles the football. It's not his fault he's put into these positions by his defense where they're losing. And it's not his fault that by the time he starts to light it up on defense, specifically in the late second, third, fourth quarter, that the defense decides to do nothing. It's a mixture of so many things that is wrong with this team that it just it makes no sense whatsoever. And now you're trying to <laughs> you want you guys want me to talk about a game plan or matchups to watch for the Saints game, Alvin Kamara is going to run for 200 yards over us, guys. Drew Brees will throw 150 yards and seven touchdowns. He doesn't need to throw the entire game away. They're going to score so many points. I will, if the Eagles, I'm not saying win, if they manage to stick with this team and keep the trend going, if they lose, they lose by seven or less. I will be so shocked. I will be so surprised, okay? Because the New Orleans Saints in the last two games have scored 45 points and then 51 points. They've only had one game this year where they have not scored more than 35 points, and that was against the Baltimore Ravens, guys. You expect me to believe that the Eagles are going to manage and find a way to win this game? You guys are crazy. Anybody out there is crazy. The Eagles are major underdogs in this game, and there's no chance in my eyes that they'll win this game. If they manage to do it, congratulations. Good job. You're 5-5. Five and five. Now keep that trend going. But if you don't win this game, you can kiss the season goodbye. Let the Redskins win a division and lose in the wild card round for all I care. And let's focus on 2019. Because this season has been so unfair to people like Carson Wentz. To people like Zach Ertz. To people like Alshon Jeffrey who are coming back, injured or not, coming back with the mentality that we would be the team to beat. That we would be the team that everybody has to go through. Not literally be the team that everyone's taking a crap on. Like it, it doesn't make any logical sense to me how we are managing to play this poorly with what we have. And a lot of it... I haven't talked about it too much. I talked about it in my latest stream when I talked about Ronald Darby. A lot of it most likely has to do with, at least offensively, defense is a whole different story. Offensively, offensive coordinator Mike Groh, who was the wide receiver coach last year, while Frank Reich was the OC last year, his game plan is revolved around his wide receivers because he is a wide receiver coach. If Deuce Staley were in, 
Imagine Deuce Staley and Doug Peterson working out this kind of system on offense where it's run first, play action, RPOs, perfect things that fit both Carson Wentz and, if needed, Nick Foles. You don't get that with Mike Rowe. You get these oh, uh, four seams, four verticals, no play action, no run game. It doesn't make any sense to me, and I cannot deal with it. And I, I, I don't expect us to win this game with the way our defense is banged up. Regardless, Jalen Mills is going to be our Lord and Savior if he manages to play this game. But if he doesn't manage to play this game, we are going to lose this game so badly. So badly that I... <sighs> Let me know what you guys think about this game in the comments down below. Um, because I clearly don't have any hope for this game. And that's shocking coming from Sacred Eagle. No hope. I would love, I would love to come on here and cheer my team on. Say that we're going to win this game. There's no chance. There is no chance. And it's going to be the same thing week six, or week 15 when we play the Rams. Week 16 when we play the Texans, guys. I am not excited whatsoever for these next games. These next upcoming month and a half of football, I am so excited for the playoffs. But I am nowhere near excited for my Philadelphia Eagles right now. Playoffs or not, I'm not. I need to be... My mind needs to be changed in order for me to be excited for this team. But right now, there's no reason to be excited, at least in my opinion. So yeah, let me know what you guys think, and I'll talk to you guys later on about the outcome of the Saints game. There's not much else for me to talk about. Talked about it all. Peace out, guys.